uh, to the panel and uh, tell you a little bit how we uh, uh, are proposing to structure this uh, 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 session. Uh, uh, let me just introduce them in order. Um, I think you've all met Lucilla. Uh, what you might, some of you might not know is that she's uh, as well known as a novelist <clears throat> as she is as a, as a musician. And uh, she knows the work of uh, Man Jingwei and uh, uh, Liao Ximei very well. So what we're proposing to do is instead of asking uh, uh, the speakers to give a 20-minute presentation, uh, to just have an open-ended conversation led by uh, Sola, and I think that would, uh, that would work much better. Right? I think everything we want to say uh, could be said and more, more effectively. So, um, uh, Zhang Lei, we have met, uh, who's doing great work in translation. Uh, uh, Mei and, and Meng Jingwei, uh, if you have looked at your, uh, the notes uh, on the web, you know that they are a team. Uh, uh, Meng Jingwei is probably the best known theater director working in China today, uh, certainly in Beijing. Uh, Yi Mei is, uh, is a, a very interesting script writer, and if you've read her play, Ember, which would be one of the things we, we, we're talking about, uh, you'll know what I mean now. Uh, your notes also tell you that uh, one of the remarkable things about their work is that they managed to be, uh, you know, quote unquote, avant-garde uh, and popular at the same time. And it's like that's, uh, they're, uh, some of the most popular, uh, uh, there's uh, some of the most popular productions uh, coming out of Pe Beijing, but they're also seen as uh, you know, avant-garde is an, an alternative. So that, that's a fact that's uh, also quite interesting to, uh, uh, to uh, talk about. Uh, what they have done is, those of you who have seen some of the clips yesterday, now of course, the, you know, you probably would have to see more, but the clips were just to give you a little idea at least of how, how the plays are like. Uh, you see that they, they both do uh, adaptations, you know, from people like Dario Fo and, and others. Uh, as well as uh, produce original plays, right, written by uh, uh, Yi Mei. Uh, if you now turn to what they do, like if you, if you remember some of the clips, you see that the, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, they really experiment with different uh, styles of stage production. And you see this uh, a kind of collage of stage styles in, in even some of the clips that you saw. Uh, if you remember the story Ember, and it's something that we, we probably will be talking about today, what you see in the story of Ember uh, uh, is like, you, you remember the story, right? It's about this, uh, this woman who, who seems to be in love with this man, and we learn later on that the reason for that is that this man had a heart transplant, and the heart transplant came from her dead lover, right? So it's kind of a very twisted uh, uh, situation where the, the material and the metaphorical uh, get uh, quite mixed up. Yeah? It's a little bit like, uh, you know, this poem by William Blake, which begins, uh, Oh Rose, and you thought it might be a romantic poem. It, it continues, Oh Rose, thou art sick. Right? And this is, it's really like these six situations that you're seeing here. Now, you remember uh, Ai Weiwei, as they uh, talked about how, uh, you know, the bright and shiny uh, uh, China also has a kind of dark side to it. I think what you're seeing with, with Meng Jing and, 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 and Yi Mei, it's not that these, the dark and, and the bright are two separate things. I mean, in the world you see the dark and the bright sort of completely mix, mixed together. And it's not that easy to, to tell one apart from the other. So you have the, the effective twists, which are also twists in space. And of course this leads to, you'll see, a kind of major point about the work, which is the use of humor. Right. Humor now becomes a kind of dislocating uh, device. It's a provocation and, and, a, and a kind of social uh, political critique, if, if, uh, if you want to go that way. Uh, but it's, um, uh, it's as if they are now re... And you, you saw this, I think, also with the Eclipse essay. Uh, they're also reinventing farce right? as, a, as, as, a, as a theater form. Of course, you know, the, uh, in the history of, of, of theater production, fast has been a kind of uh, uh, important technique. But you see here fast being uh, uh, reintroduced in, in, a, in a different way. Uh, one last point, and then I'll, I'll open, I'll, I'll leave it to the panel. 
would be uh, language. I mean, the, those who uh, can follow Chinese would see that the language that has been used is like popular, slangy, right? It's like a lot of it is like uh, uh, Beijing uh, dialect. So here you have also, uh, as it were, the use of the local, right? But the local, as, as we've been saying many times, the local is already something that's dislocated, right? While it's local, the, the local the dislocation that you get in the language that's saying this, that also, I think, leads to other things. So what I'm going to do now is to open the conversation. They're going to just start uh, uh, talking to each other, and then we can let, like, uh, join in uh, after, after a bit. Or even when they're talking, if you want some uh, to, to, to intervene, that, that's fine as well. Okay, right. so, okay, right, okay. Well, maybe we can start this way. Uh, because there, there's some uh, 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 photographs uh, with, uh, you know, of, of um, the, uh, state productions. Maybe we'll just start with uh, Meng Jiewei, who's the uh, theater director, who could comment a little bit on the, on the photographs uh, to get us started. And then uh, Sola could uh, continue. Hello. Uh, 2000年到現在的一些戲劇的一個一些照片 Good morning everyone. Uh, I would like to start with uh, showing uh, everybody some photos for the uh, plays we did uh, starting from 2000 up until now. 這個是根據馬亞可斯基的《臭蟲》改編的一個話劇, 叫《臭蟲》uh, this play is based on uh, Mayakovsky's original, uh, original, original play called the, the Stink Bug. Mm. And this is also a Stink Bug. This is about the latest thinking about the latest uh, this is something uh, we looked at last night called uh, Head with No Tail, uh, the play about a, a face change. Uh, this is uh, called uh, Rhinoceros in Love, uh, written by Liao Yimei 10 years ago. This one as well. This is the latest uh, uh, version of the latest version of the latest the latest production we did of Rhinoceros in Love. Uh, it was uh, done in, in water, performed in water. This is the uh, this is a, a multimedia play uh, based on a poem called uh, Flower in the Mirror and Moon in the Water. This one too. Uh, this is um, Amber, written by Liao Yimei as well, and I think you have um, read the script. Amber. This one called uh, The Life Opinion of Two Dogs. Same here. This is a two dogs' the scene. This is a photo of when the play was put up. This is the the scene. This is based on a French director, Fassbinder. 呃，就是一个电影改编的《爱比死更冷酷》，去年呃演出的。Uh, 
this play is based on the uh, film script by Fassbinder. Uh, it's called Love is Crueler Than Death. 这是新的一个我们刚刚新做的一个音乐剧，叫《空中花园谋杀案》的一个一个戏，在上海也也演演出过。This is a musical called uh, "Murder in a uh, in a Garden in the Air." 空中花园谋杀。This one as well. 这个是我们的一个一个一个呃，在北京新建的一个我们自己的一个。大约三百五十人左右的一个自己的一个小剧场，叫蜂巢剧场。一个图片。嗯啊，啊，this is a a a playhouse we uh adapted our our own playhouse in Beijing with uh three hundred and fifty seats. Uh, the playhouse is called the Beehives. 嗯，我们会在这这个。这个剧场里边，这个举办我们自己建立的一个北京青年戏剧节，来呃和北京的很多年轻的导演共同的做这么一个青年戏剧节。And in here, we're about to hold the a Beijing Youth Drama Festival with participation of a lot of young young people interested. 我我大致就。介介绍一下。Uh, this this is basically the the photos I wanted to show you. Before we start the conversation, uh, I was so excited about Williamson <laughs> participating uh, in, in this seminar that I almost forgot to uh, introduce him. William is someone that we have spoken to extensively uh, before we started uh, this whole program, and he actually gave us a lot of advice on on how to proceed. Uh, especially working in the in the uh, 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 in the Shanghai uh, uh, context. Now, uh, William is a professor of drama and vice president of the Shanghai Theatre uh, Academy. He's also a contributing ed editor of this very well-known uh, drama journal called the Drama Review, right? And he's written some really uh, 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 spectacular essays there. One that I managed to have looked at is called. Uh, what power and performance across uh, ethnic uh, ethnic lines or ethnic boundaries. I mean, that, that's an essay that I would certainly recommend you all to look at. Uh, he has also been a practicing, he's also a practicing uh, playwright. And I think what he could, would contribute, uh, one of the things that he would contribute to the, uh, uh, to the conversation would be not just the problems of uh, Theater design, but also maybe the differences between you know theater in Shanghai and theater in Beijing. Right, so that uh, that's how the the, the conversation. Oh. Uh. Well, uh, okay. Well, I was prepared to stick to the scripted topics, particularly the second one, the theater of design, and uh, I would like to comment uh, to some degree. Uh, Meng Jinghui and Liao Yimei's works from the perspective of design. Uh, 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 Meng Jinghui showed the pictures that started in 2000. Actually, uh, I'm even more interested in his earlier works. Uh, from a design point of view, uh, very simple. Some, some of his early works didn't even have design. Sifan. Mm -hmm. Sifan didn't even have design. Uh, Zhang Lei, how do you translate Sifan? Longing for secular life? Uh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> His right. earlier works. That's also uh, almost a trend in China, in Chinese theater, and to a certain degree also in the world. Oh. Um, because nowadays you see more and more uh, extravaganza on stage. On Broadway and West End in London, you see mega musicals that attract that attract people mainly for its set, for its set lighting and costumes. The same thing is happening in China, but with somewhat different reasons. Um, I like uh, Meng Jinghui and Liao Yimei's work because they actually don't rely so much on extravaganza. 
even though their later works are also relying more heavily on design, design elements. For other Chinese theater people, especially directly government-sponsored projects, design, spectacular sets, costume and lighting have become more and more important. One important reason is because there's very little room in terms of choice of subject matters, in terms of theme. In the meantime, the government pumps in lots of money in order to create so-called top artistic productions. Zhang Lei, you how to translate this design? A major government uh, cultural project in the past five years or so is something called in Chinese Jingping Gong Cheng. Jingping is what? Exquisite production. Government yeah, supports it. But it has to be really outstanding, like the, yeah, the top the productions. Best, uh, top Each year there will be 10 mm. selected mm. by so called experts handpicked by the Ministry of Culture and luckily they haven't gotten it. I haven't gotten it. Never. Uh, because that's, that's the worst poly cultural policy the Chinese government uh, has adopted. Jingping Gong Cheng, the top productions, top 10 productions, uh, get lots of money from the government. The first, in the first two years, the uh, irony was most of the productions were already established productions. And the government still wanted to give each production a few million IMB. Once I learned uh, from a friend of mine who was uh, a prominent director in Beijing, she was invited to Shanghai and put up in Jingjiang Fan Dian. And she told me she went to two dinners, each costing like 10, 20,000 RMB. I never knew his host, Yang Shaolin, general manager of Shanghai Dramatic Arts Center, had that much money. Then I learned the reason why he had to use the money that way was because all the money, those millions, had to be used on that particular production which had been revised so many times, which had been successfully <laughs> running for five or seven years. But still, the top, the Beijing government, wants you to further improve it. Then they have to invite people from, or, uh, mostly from Beijing, and they have to spend the money. I said, if I were him, I would also spend money that way. That way, at least save some time. Otherwise, if we save the money, then, the process could be much, much longer. So the first few, uh, the first couple of years, the Jingping Gong Cheng, the top productions were relatively good because they were existing productions. Later on, all the provincial governments try to create original work to win the title of top production. Then, actually, the productions got worse because everybody wanted to please the experts, the government officials. And they all, they all knew you cannot use subject matters out of limit to please anybody. You cannot explore too audacious themes. But there's one thing that could please everybody that is exquisite extravaganza set, set costumes, lightings, and these are the things that, would, that could cost lots of money. Good idea, a good theme, sensitive themes, can, doesn't really cost money. It costs courage, it sometimes costs lives. So lots of money were spent on sets. That's why theater of design has become a trend, both in the West and in China. But in China, there is 
a reason that probably Westerners may not know. That's the only area where you are free. Artists are free to explore different possibilities uh, to spend money on. Uh, in a sense, personally, uh, Meng Jinghui is a good friend of mine. I like many of his productions, but personally, I prefer his productions with simpler sets. Uh, one uh, salient example is a relatively new one. That's the two dogs. Two dogs. That was just two years ago. Right, two years ago, and uh, it was selected to be the top. The only top production of the year in 2007 by Nanfang Zhou Mo, a South, English means South Weekly, the Southern Weekly, Southern Weekly, definitely the best newspaper in China. I, I, wa I was one of the five judges that picked uh, two dogs. That play doesn't even have a set. Uh, but that, well, that, the creators, Meng Jinghui, and the two actors uh, were very smart. I just said it's very hard to explore audacious themes on stage in China now. Uh, that doesn't mean there's nothing you can do. If we look at Two Dogs, that play, where they explore some very sensitive issues. In today's China, but it got accepted. At least the government did not say anything to ban it. Uh, it was named the only top production of the year by the best Chinese newspaper because they used comedy, farce, and more, most important device they used is they named the play Two Dogs Opinion About Life. So that year, I was very happy to see a new trend on Chinese stage that people now are smart enough to find ways to disguise the sensitive issues being discussed on stage. Uh, I remember two very important productions, one in ancient costumes, the other in so-called dark costumes. In fact, these two plays are both exploring today's issues. But because one looks like set in ancient China, the other looks like about two dogs, make, make poking fun about dogs. So the government officials do not interfere. In fact, I don't think they did not see the point there, but many government officials are people like me. Sometimes they really don't want to interfere, but many of them are afraid if they don't interfere. Their bosses above them would scold them. So if you do in the face play criti critical of today's China, then I'm sorry, I have to close your show. If you disguise it smart, in a smart way, like using two dogs or using some ancient Chinese, even though the language you use is all contemporary colloquial Chinese, the audience members get it, get your message, but the officials Officials don't have to do anything. So uh, that's why I like the two dogs a, a lot better. But the good thing about their work, uh, their works <coughs> is it's uh, very versatile. Sometimes they explore uh, sensitive issues about today's Chinese, especially in two dogs. Especially, I see the play as to migrant workers or to migrant artists, starving artists, poor people, which is very rarely seen on Chinese stage. 
because theater goers, those who can afford tickets, are never migrant workers. They are so-called white collar, college educated, white collar office workers. That's why most Chinese modern drama artists have to cater to their needs. That's why most plays are peopled with characters like themselves, like you see in uh, *Rhinoceros in Love*, uh, in Love, and *Amber*. I personally would prefer to see more disfranchised people presented on stage. It's very hard to do. I think I've spent enough time then. Uh,我说两句，我觉得你拿那个，呃，那个孟京辉和廖一梅他们的戏剧是一个非常难讨论的一个呃戏剧课题，呃，而且里边有很多的东西牵扯到不仅是中国的情况，还有一个是出过国的
，所所以呢，就是从什么角度来看啊、呃？如果比如说作为外国的主流啊、呃、艺术界来看，就会觉得啊，这些中国的第三世界的这种城市，第三世界的。城市的观念对我们来说，他们不过是在重复我们已经发生过的一些城市概念，所以他们事先就把这些都忽略掉了。啊、uh, ，from a Western perspective or any of the Western perspectives, they would say, "Well, this is a third world urban、uh, scene that has been repeating、um, after." What, whatever we had done in the past, so they would automatically dismiss it. Ah, 作为中国主流的呢艺术界呢，他们会忽略这个东西呢，就是呃，刚才其实呃 ，William 说的话我都同意，但是有一个小小的区别，我不是特别同意。比如说，因为你说到你希望看到更多的这个移民的出现，因为戏剧表现都是白领，是吧？就中国的戏剧，我不是太，但是我觉得啊。孟京辉他们的白领不是我们所所说的那种，就是别的戏剧表现的，呃，就是在比如说《虎伯》里表现的东西。那他们所表现这些东西，又正是中国主流特别反对的，就是所谓吃饱了喝足的一群人，你不知道他要说什么，不知道干什么。但是他们要说的要其实很重要，正是年轻人都关心的啊、呃。但是呢，让很多人看到就是说这些吃饱了喝足的人，他们要干什么？呃，这是从二十多年以前，在中国一直有这样的争论，就是吃饱了喝足的这种这种写作，啊、呃，这个就是也特别明显的，就是呃，呃，在在这个呃廖一梅的这个剧作里头能表现出来，就多余的一种感情，对于中国的主流的呃主流的文艺界解释，就是说好像所谓多余人的多余的感情，啊、嗯。Uh, just now, um. William talked about、um, why、uh, they were different, and、uh, I agree with him.、Uh, but there's one small thing that I would beg to differ slightly. That he said he would like to see more of the marginalized, the, the migrants on stage, because there's too much written about the white collar, the mainstream. But I think there's a difference、uh, in what Liao Yi made that her kinds of work is presenting. Uh, the, which is a bunch of young people. They're just、uh, well fed. They they don't know what to do. They they don't know any better. But I think they these young people they still they also have something to say that the mainstream failed to recognize. So her white collar are. Different from others、um, presented on stage. 其实这个争论在二十多年前就已经呃牵扯到就是对我的作品的争论，就是大家说中国人挣扎的这么厉害，这么多人饿着，呃，怎么可能有这样的人还在？比如说我的作品就是在讨论音乐，怎么有人还能吃饱了再能讨论音乐？那呃，就是说长期的这争论到今天没有解决，到廖一梅的作品的，我觉得又反映出来，大家觉得嗯。我不，我不反对呃作品要反映移移民或者说是呃中国的一些贫困的现象，但是呃像，呃一梅这样的作品就是讨论一些呃所谓很多人看出来是所谓无中生有的，可是这些东西恰恰都是年轻人心里头非常重要的一些主题啊，我觉得不这些这些讨论是不可以忽视的。Um, I am. Uh, sympathize with her because my work had gone through the same kind of deba debate, and the debate goes like、um, there's so many Chinese just struggling and、uh, for their basic survival, and there are this bunch of young people with nothing to better to do, and they're worried about、um, their about their music or anything. So of course it's important to. Talk about the migrants and the poverty and、uh, all these issues, but there are things that、um, out there that's really crucial for young people like this, and、uh, they're not just you know producing something,、um, some feelings out of, out of nothing. They have nothing better to do. It's not true. 嗯、呃，就是呃，说了这么多的话呢，其实最主要的就是孟京辉，呃，他们两个人用的戏剧语言也是特别特殊的，比如说特别好的北京语言。那、呃、这个特别好的北京语言是从国际交流来说是最难的。
，这就以前我曾经写过一个。呃呃，短文就说的叫“文化不可交流”，就是北京的语言太好了，根本没办法翻译出去啊。你说。呃 ，With that much said, um, I also want to point out that the kind of drama Meng Jinghui and Liao Yimei are doing, what's so good about it is really they use the best, um, they they have a really good way of using the Beijing local language. Uh, I had written something called that um, culture cannot be communicated, and this is what I mean exchange. because cannot be exchange, culture exchange. cannot be exchanged, and this is what I mean because their play is really hard to translate. 啊，所以我看到他们的戏的时候，我觉得在这种用北京语言用这么好的戏剧，曾经老舍做过，但是老舍因为表现的是那一个时代是非常严肃的政治和社会的现象，而孟京辉说的似乎看起来是，呃。很多人看起来认为是很无聊的一些痞子现象，但是又同样说的是非常社深刻的社会问题。对我来说，我觉得他们的戏剧是有一个特别重大的一个存在价值。但是呢，特别遗憾，就这样的语言真的是很难去翻译成外国语的。Um, this kind of uh, use of language has done by Lao She when he was doing. Uh, he wrote the the plays about Beijing, but those were uh, very serious political and social themes, but what they're doing not right now is just as excellent. But the theme is more about the about um, some um, punkish um, young people. But I think it re also uh, reflects some very profound social issues, and they have great value um, in their own rights. But it's really hard or almost impossible to translate. So, we hope that Yi Mei will talk about her challenges and obstacles. Let's talk about some of the obstacles that she faced. For example, William also mentioned that she was afraid of being lost. What did she say? What did she say? Um, so, I will um, hand the microphone over to Yi Mei and ask her to talk, uh, get further into these misunderstandings and uh, her um, dilemmas, uh, which um, William briefly mentioned, but she, she will let us know more about it. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't feel as so um, sad or badly treated as Sola just said. Because, uh, actually, first, is my attitude. You, for example, you have seen Hu Bo. Hu Bo has one word that I want to say. It's my a t t i uh, actually, uh, that's because of my personal attitude. Uh, there's one line in Amber, which is really uh, reflect my basic attitude, which is um, uh, the popular aesthetics is a bunch of bullshit. Uh, 那个，我的戏其实应该说很受欢迎，因为《恋爱的犀牛》已经演了十年，那个换了四版、四个版本，然后胡波也演了很多场，但是没有被，可能没有被正确的解读。我觉得索拉是说的特别准确的，他们一直以他们喜欢的方式来看待这些戏。Uh. Actually, um, the, the dramas were, they were quite well received uh, because uh, Rhinoceros in Love, uh, for the 10 years, I have done four productions and uh, Always Full House and um, Amber as well. Uh, very well received by young people, but um, of course, it, they may not be interpreting the plays as I originally intended. 呃，我觉得我跟孟京辉还是有一个呃，从根本上的区别。他是一个对中国戏剧有着责任感的一个人，就是他有一个这种强烈的责任感，要改变这个中国戏剧的品质。但是就我个人而言呢，其实我没有这种企图，我可能更关心自己的作品。嗯、um, ，there is a slight 
difference between myself and Meng Jinghui because Meng Jinghui has a very strong sense of mission uh, to improve the quality of Chinese drama, but for me, it's a drama is more personalized. Uh,我的戏呢,一直是,就是我觉得我的戏可能对于其他人,国外的人来说呢,它没有什么特别可以明确的辨认的中国元素,就像你们在,呃,比如说奥运会开幕式上看到的,或者是某种揭露黑暗
？呃，当呃，我从开始，然后慢慢的确定我的这种语言方式，然后到我对他充分的信任，然后完全的运用它，几乎我觉得有时候达到了一种语言暴力的程度。然后我能看到这个语言暴力在剧场里产生的效果。然后到现在，我有一个，然后达到。最后呢，现在呢，我是觉得对这种语言有一种不信任感了。呃、uh, ，from the beginning, when I determine the kind of language I want to use, I be,、uh, build a kind of trust with this language. I use this kind of language. I can create almost a、uh, violence with this language that's very、uh, apparent in the theater. But now I'm starting to develop a distrust、uh, with this language. 好，这个我我的创作的一些问题，如果你们有些问题，我们可以那个你们提一些问题，我看你们感兴趣哪方面，我们再谈。主要现在还是交给孟京辉吧。啊，呃 ，I will hand hand it over to 孟京辉 ，but later if you have any questions, ah,、uh, we can talk a bit more. 你想谈谈什么？是我们的。我们这个，我我我想说两个问题。第一个问题，为什么我一直要坚持实验和先锋？呃、uh, ，I want to talk about two issues. Uh, first one is why I've always persisted in doing experimental or the avant-garde. 呃，中国的戏剧从五十年代开始，一直到呃上个世纪末，将近五就是四五十年的时间来，都受到苏联戏剧的呃影响，特别斯坦尼斯拉夫斯基体系的影响。呃、uh, ，The Chinese drama,、uh, starting from the 1950s up until the end of the 20th century,、uh, has always been heavily、uh, influenced by the Russians.、Uh, Russians Uh, especially the Stanislavski system. 呃，所有的领导，还有他们的美学，还有就是所有的，就是掌握戏剧资源的那些人，比如像什么呃院长啊，比如像领导啊，还有像什么一些呃一戏剧专家们，他们都是从。呃，斯坦尼斯拉夫斯基那边得到的好多美学。嗯、um, ，because、uh, all the leaders and their aesthetics, all the people who have the resources of、uh, theater production, for example, the experts, the presidents of the, the theater houses, they all got their、um, aesthetics from the Russians. 他们掌管着这些中国戏剧的。这个这个这个发展已经五五四五十年了。And they were they had been taking control of Chinese drama for over forty or fifty years. 呃，所以我我我我是，呃，应该说是八十年代的大学生，九十年代的呃，就是实践者。Uh, for me, I was a university student in the 80s, and、uh, I got I I started practicing in this theater production in the 90s. 就是我我我我就是要让这样的一个整体的一个被主被主流思想控被被这种主流的这种这种这种传统的戏剧方法控制的这种戏剧呢，要发生变化。Uh, I wanted to make some changes to this mainstream and、uh, traditional approach. 很高兴的是，经过二十年的努力，现在已经我我我我跟我们的一些朋友已经把中国的戏剧搞得乱七八糟了。嗯、uh, ，and uh, very happily, twenty、uh, years has passed, and me and my friends have、uh, successfully made a mess out of Chinese drama. 所以中国戏剧现在，呃，往哪边发展？有一次，有一次，有一个朋友问我说：“中国戏剧以后该怎么办呢？”中国的这个戏剧，然后我就，然后我们得出的一个结论就是，我们以后往哪边走，中国戏剧就往哪边走。Uh, and people ask me, what is the way forward for Chinese drama?、Uh, I said. 
the way forward for Chinese drama is whichever way we want to take it. 嗯，呃，那中国戏剧，我们我们现在比较好玩的一个事情就是，我们现在在在各个地方不同的，我们用用先锋、用实验、用前卫这些词来作为我们的好多呃好多事情的一个招牌，然后用这个招牌，在这个招牌之下，我们可以抵抗好多奇奇怪怪的力量。然后我们自己慢慢也能产生出一种新的力量来发展中国戏剧，当代的中国戏剧。Uh, the fun part about it is, uh, in different places, we have used these fancy terms of pioneering or experimental or avant-garde to disguise whatever we're doing and defend us against all. Forces uh, from all directions, so that we would be able to build our own modern Chinese drama. 大约二十年前的时候，我的一个戏叫《我爱叉叉叉》，I Love X X X。这个戏在日本演出，然后演出的那那这是一个非常的奇怪的关于一个语言的戏。然后演完了以后，我当时决定就。尽量少进行国就国际文化交流。Ah, <laughs>、uh, twenty years ago, I did a play called "I Love XXS." It was shown in Japan. Ah,、uh, it was a very strange ah、uh, ah、uh, play, ah、uh, very language based. And starting from that ah point,、uh, point, I made the delib ah、uh, decision that I would. Do less of the so-called international exchange. So, I've been working in the past ten years mostly in the United States. In Beijing, in Shanghai, in Shenzhen, and we are also in some cities in Beijing. In China, in various cities in China, we are starting our production of the plays and our exhibition. So, over more than Over more than a dozen years,、uh, we have based our、uh, creative work and production in China,、uh, showing our play in, in major cities like Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, as well as in some other cities、uh, to do our、uh, creative work and also the, the touring shows. 嗯，就是我我我不再带中国的戏剧再去国外演出了。如果外国的戏戏剧家或者外国的观众要是感兴趣的话，就让他们到中国来看戏吧。Ah,、uh, so I no longer take my drama troupe overseas. So if anybody um overseas wants to see my play, ah,、uh, please just buy buy a ticket and come to China. 那么这是这也是我们特别的一个情况。我们就是这样一直。到了现在，我们可以有自己的一个固定的一个剧场来做我们自己的、自己的这种样式的戏剧啊。Uh, this is something a little different about us, a little unique. And now we're able to have our own theater house to put up shows the 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 way we want it. 嗯，差不多。Uh, that that's about it for now. 我来补充一点吧。啊 ，I'll add something. I have two. I have two things to report. <laughs> well, when you we just said he stopped taking his productions overseas, I know at least one of his plays have been produced in the States. A mutual friend of ours directed directed the one of his plays in in Boston. Hope. This kind of things will happen more and in more places and more frequently. The other thing is about the government. Well, it is true that the government never particularly liked their productions, stories, and themes. But、uh, they are luckier than some of the underground filmmakers. Their their plays have never been banned. And one important development is in Shanghai. Just a few months ago, a district government officially invited 
Meng Jinhui to join forces with them to set up a base in Shanghai. And what they are particularly interested in is not the stories, the characters, the language, the themes, but their ability to generate box office income. They can make money. So all the governments in China at every level is trying to make money. So now they are seeing this team is seen as one of the very few theater people in China that are guaranteed to make money. That's why they are invited to set a permanent uh, base in Shanghai. La, uh, just a few months ago, uh, four productions have been uh, uh, presented in Shanghai, uh, in Jing'an district, not too far from here. It's a downtown area, which really leads me to talk to uh, your topic, theater of design, in a metaphorical sense. You still remember Ai Weiwei was here uh, yesterday talking about Olympic Games as a, almost like a shameful show. Well, for foreigners, the Chinese government wants to give you a theater of design. The government wants you to see a stage. Everything is script, ideally. And the designers include the government, include some artists who would work with them, sometimes include foreign architects. There's one example that interestingly combines both meanings of this term, theater of design. In a literal sense, theater of design is about what we do on stage. In a metaphorical sense, it's the work of the Chinese government. The entire society, particularly major cities, that foreign tourists, foreign visitors would see should be a theater of design. Last year, Olympic Games made Beijing a big theater of design. Next year, the World Expo will make Shanghai a big theater of design. And in Jing'an district, Jing'an district, uh, they wanted to, or they really proposed a plan to make Nanjing Road Shanghai's Broadway. And Meng Jinghui's productions or Meng, Meng Jinghui's company would be a very important part of it. Well, that's another example of how uh, ridiculous some government officials think. certain things could be designed. In fact, I have been advocating for the government to design better in non-profit theater. But the government always wants to save money in non-profit enterprises. They want to make money. But they, they don't know. Some of the officials are so ignorant. They believe theater everywhere. Well, since Broadway can make money, we can also make a Broadway that makes money. In fact, Broadway was never planned. Lincoln Center could be planned. Kennedy Center could be planned. Non, not for profit performing arts centers can be planned, should be planned by the government, by foundations. But Commercial theater is free market. Nobody could plan it. So while I'm happy that the Jing'an district government got <laughs> Meng Jinghui and Liao Yimei to Shanghai a lot more frequently, I can predict that Shanghai Broadway project on Nanjing Road will not succeed. Unless the government wants to put in lots of subsidies, 
but that's no longer Shanghai Broadway. So, but I still hope that they will stay, uh, not only because they can make more. I'm, I'm not sure how long they can. Well, I, I'm sure they cannot guarantee every production will make money. Uh, they are working in the National Theatre Company in Beijing, which is heavily subsidized, which should be the case. National Theatre Company should be subsidized the, by the government. And I hope they can continue to experiment, which means there's no guarantee for you to make money. If the government only wants them to bring in money, then very likely in a couple of years, they would say, oh, this production fails, then we don't invite you. I don't want that to happen. I hope the government, with the intention of make theater in Shanghai more prosperous, should be ready to set up money to subsidize good artists for more experimentations.但实际上的这个其实是我们做戏剧一直的态度或者是他用这个方式the audience, the viewer, uh, because I think it's a very subtle relationship. Uh, as I said earlier, I, we mentioned that popular aesthetics is bullshit. That line in the, uh, in the play, Amber, I deliberately told the actors to really speak to the audience. And uh, when they spoke the line to the audience, they were staring at the audience and uh, really meant it. And there was a lot of laughter. I think that the laughter could mean two things. One is um, they don't think this popular aesthetics has nothing to do with them. They felt more of an elitist um, aesthetics. And the other one could be uh, they were using laughter to release, uh, relieve their um, sense of embarrassment or discomfort. So uh, I think it's always been this kind of um, subtle relationship we have been playing with in our theater.